Hello and welcome to CS230. So in this getting started video, I'm going to show you how you can use both PHP and Node.js to connect to an online relational database. That database will be MariaDB perhaps, or it will be MySQL depending on your setup. Both MariaDB and MySQL are functionally the same kind of database. Okay, so my, my basic approach really is that you install XAMPP initially. Um, and that is available for Mac OS, it's available for Windows, and it allows you to be able to have a manager to control the setup and starting and administration of a MySQL database, an FTP server, or an Apache web server. It also installs PHP, and you can verify, we'll show you how to verify that in a couple of minutes. You also need probably to install Node.js, okay, and it's available for, um, if you go to Node.js, um, it's uh, node.js.org. Um, and you can download and install for your particular operating system. And we can verify once we've done this that these are working by going to a window and checking there's PHP, it's fine, and that's my version, it's PHP 7, and I've got Node, Node 13. So this all works fine. So I now know that I'm able to run both those um, environments on my machine. However, not everybody at this particular time has access to a machine where they can install the software that they might need. So they're going to have to work remotely or work in an online environment. So the first thing we need to be able to do is to be able to set up a database. Then we need to be able to work with a PHP environment and we need to be able to work alternatively with a Node.js environment. So let's start with the, the database first. So I would recommend that you set up your online database um, using remotemysql.com. It's free to use and um, it works very well. I've tested it and it's nice for, for classroom assignments and so forth. Okay, so if you go and you click on the login.php page, you get up something like this. And this is my, my, my account details, my email, um, my password, um, a human verification check, and then you click to create account. And I've done this. And once the registration is successful, you check your mail and then you can confirm that your mail is okay. And then you can just log in and you're ready to go. So you get a dashboard, there's you, my up in the top left hand corner. I have, I can look at my databases, some statistics, privileges and so forth. What we want to do is create a database. So we click on the database link here and um, we have some databases. So um, I'm just gonna delete this one so we can show you how it works. Um, so I have no database. So we'll create a new database from scratch here. Yes, I want to create a new database. And now I have a database. So what this does is it creates a username and a database name, which are the same. And it gives you a password and a server in order to connect to. This um, 3306 is the MySQL port, so you don't have to worry too much about that ordinarily. Okay, so what this does is it provides you with everything you need to be able to access tables that are stored in this database using these authentication details. Now, it's not a good idea to share these kind of details with everybody and anybody that can access your data and, um, and manipulate the data, and, and uh, it's a security risk. And um, once I finish with this video, I'll delete this database. Okay, but it's, um, it's a good start anyway. So the first thing, so, so we have this, we know it works, and that's good. So let's... Um, Let's do something with this database then. Let's create ourselves a table. So we can go down to the action here and we can start phpMyAdmin and that allows us to be able to um, log in. So we don't have the details because I've logged in previously. So we need to copy our details here. So this is our username, copied. And I'm just going to put it in here. Okay, and we need to get a password. And the password, of course, will be the one that's given to us here. Go. And now we have PHP MyAdmin launched. That allows us to be able to set up manually and work with our tables. I'll save those details because I might need them a little bit later. So we're going to create a table because we need to work with tables. So the table will be called test table. It will have four columns and we'll just click go to save it. And here we have our table ready to go. I'm just going to have the column, the field names, ID, F name, L name, and email. And I'm going to make these our chars. And we make it 80. We'll just make them 80. Okay, and we'll save. And so that's our table. We can browse and look at the table, and then um, we can look at the structure of the table. And uh, we can insert something into the table if we wish. Okay, so let's go and say this is ID 1, 
we call this John Keating and and I'll just go and insert this. Okay, let's browse the table and we'll see that we have the data in the table. So we have one table called test table, one row with one piece of data in here. So that's enough to work with for now. So now, okay, so that's everything we need to do with, with our table. Okay, so what we want to do next is we want to be able to use, um, uh, let's say Node.js. So if you want to look and work about Node.js, you can go to the w3schools.com um, lessons on how to work with Node.js. And it shows you about how to set up and create a connection to Node.js to query a database, all the very basic functionality that's there. So you need to get these into your Node.js um, app. So if you are running locally, then you can create a Node.js file here that allows you to be able to connect to your database. This is the connection. And we're going to use, we're going to have to replace these details here with the ones from the, the web we got earlier. This is connects and tells us how many tables are there and, and, and so forth. So I'm now going to switch back and just capture that login information okay, that we had from earlier. So here is our password. We'll capture this and we'll pop it in here. My password is here and our username and our database will be the same so we'll just um, capture those and um, our table uh, or our uh, database is here we want to look at the tables that are in there and so that's pretty much everything you know we we can connect using the Node.js, and we need to use the MySQL library, of course, to be able to connect. And then we will um, connect, show how many tables are there. And this is a separate one that allows us to be able to do something with this. Okay, so let's save this, and we'll go to um, here. I have my files, I have my Node.js demo, and I can say Node node.demo.js, connect it, and we get the data, and it tells us that there's a table there. Okay, so that's fine. So um, so that works. So we're able to connect to the table. Let's modify it um, a little bit, and let's uncomment this line, this line, and we'll just comment out this line. And so now we should be able to find and get the information running a basic query on the table. Let's save it again. Let's go back over to our here and we see we were able to pull the data back as a raw packet and we were able to combine the data choose the individual fields from the result um, uh, object that came back from the query and just produce some basic um, piece of line of comb combination to put to the, to the display so that's Node.js so now let's say we want that that's Node.js using your, your, your locally installed tools so now let's say we want to actually work online. So I recommend going to um, repl.it, okay? And I, again, created, a, a, created an account and I worked with setting this up. And you'll see here, I actually have a nice panel um, for working and, and setting up with .js. Um, and it's very similar. I have an editor and I have a run environment. So um, I've got copied it. Well, let's just copy the, the code directly from, from Visual Code Studio, okay? Copy here. And let's pop this code in here. Okay, straight copy of the code. Now we're running in a browser environment. I'm going to run this here. And you can see that it works the exact same. What's nice about the um, this environment, REPL, is that it allows us to be able to make network connections um, and they're unblocked and that's brilliant so it means now we can work and run entirely online so we can have our database set up running um, with remote um, MySQL we can just run our 
our Node.js in this online environment, or we can run it from the command line and we're able to do our database manipulation. Of course, if you wanted, you could have set up your database locally using phpMyAdmin on your local setup and your local instance without using this. Um, if you had no internet connection, of course, you could do everything locally and it would be fine. Okay, so that's how we do this with, um, with uh, Node.js. So let's say we want to do something with PHP. Well, again, we can go to the W3 Schools website and we can just work and look through all the examples on how to connect to a database, for example, with PHP. And here is an example that I, I chose earlier. And of course, I made a small version that I was able to put into Visual Studio Code. So we're looking at the code on the right here and it's a PHP equivalent to the, the Node.js example on the left. So here I'm just looking at trying to get a table count and I'm just trying to pull out some information from the table here. So um, actually this is the demo here, the one on the, let's get rid of the one on the right there. It's uh, not useful. Okay, so here is the functional equivalent, but this time again, we need to include our connection details. So let's copy them from here. This is our user. And let's go back and get the password. And of course, the database is the same as the username. And we're there. I mean, and it should work pretty much the exact same way. Let's, um, let's save this. And let's go to our local environment. And we'll, this time we're down here, we're going to look at the PHP version. And again, it tells us there's one table in there um, and it's called test table. And now let's have a look at uncommenting this. And then um, save it. And we can see again that it queried the data and was able to pull out the exact same information that we had with the Node.js. Okay. Okay, so that's for the local instance and it works fine. Again, we need to go back now and look at what happens if we don't have the ability to be able to install something locally. So we could actually use PHP uh, Playground on REPL.IT as well, but the downside of doing that is that it does not allow you to make network connections from within the Playground in the same way as it does for your um, Node.js. So in this particular case, I recommend that we go to PHP Fiddle dot org okay and it's a useful site and so you can go here and um, to code space and you can paste your program in here into this and we'll be able to run it and see that we can make the connections i recommend php fiddle.org because it doesn't block the network connections to external sites so let's go back to visual studio code and we just copy our our php and let's go back here and we replace all of this with the code we have our password and authentication details here. We can run this and we get the same result as we had. So it means that, you know, if you want to work in an online environment where you don't have um, the ability to be able to, um, to install tools locally, you'll still be able to do database driven web development for practice and for assignments um, using either PHP or Node.js. Okay, I hope you found the video useful. Um, let me know if you need to know anything else about the, the topic. You have my email, john.keating at mu.ie.